Just taking transits now. Yeah, I think we're okay. Engine neutral. Anchor disarmed. ahead of it is a 2 metre line okay, that's and fine. it's 1.2 on the other side of it, okay. the chart of depth. It just means we'll be sitting on the bottom at low tide. We went ashore at Union Hall because it had a shop, but we only discovered the dinghy dock after a long walk from where we had come ashore. Once we got back, we decided to clean under the boat by using the rope technique. A long coarse rope is lowered under the boat and then moved up and down, whilst slowly walking backwards along the boat. doesn't get everything, but a lot of weed was visible in the water as it came off. But there was one unforeseen problem. It's worked, but I think we've destroyed a little ecosystem. Look at all those little wrigglers that are, uh, have been sheltering on Salty Lass. What are we going to do with them? Wash them overboard! Hey! The next morning, we left Glandor under a hazy sunrise and a calm sea. Glandor. We literally are just at the entrance anyway, so it's not very far. But we've got to keep the engine revs low. Um, so we're going in at about one, just over one knot. Uh, because anything more than that and the engine just starts vibrating. Um, and uh, it looks like Debbie's going to be, or me, in the wetsuit today. Oh yeah, what? Well, well, <laughs> it's nine o'clock here on Salty Laughs. That's nine o'clock in the morning. 
Oh, it feels so wrecked already. Uh, we um, we are back in. We're back in at Union uh, Union Hall, or very close to Union Hall. We're back exactly where we anchored earlier. Yeah. <laughs> we dropped yeah. the anchor in the same spot. Okay, so apparently we dropped it in the same spot. But um, uh, Beverly, we had to drop the anchor because we were hoping to take a mooring ball, but um, there was very little depth underneath the mooring balls. So we anchored where exactly where we were. And um, okay. in, Beverly had to put reverse on. And the boat was shuddering even more in reverse than it was going forwards. Uh, but as we were coming in, we just kept the engine quite low revs, didn't we, Bev? So we were only doing about one to two knots. But luckily, we managed to get the Genoa out uh, for a little bit of the way. So that increased our speed. But we didn't want to, because we were very confined, we didn't want it to have uh, too much speed. So. We've got some of it, but honest to goodness, it's nine o'clock and uh, kettle's on. And the kettle is on. Oh, yes, cup of tea in the future. Oh, actually, tea, coffee. Man. Actually, I was gonna make you coffee. No, it's coffee, it's a cup of coffee. Oh, I'm so lucky. Well, are you ready, Bev? No. <laughs> so, how many uh, wetsuits do you have on? It's a double thickness wetsuit, this one. Yeah, Beth's got Perhaps mine on. Perhaps the correct on. way to put it would be it's a double suit thickness wetsuit. Because I've got mine on and then Gainer's over the top because she takes a 16 and I take a 14. And my 14 brings me up to a 16 so I can put hers on on top. Um, so these are finally coming out. We bought those in Scotland, didn't we, Bev? I don't think we put them in. Oban. Was it? Was I'll it say one thing for this double thickness wetsuit. I'm sweating in it like a dog, I really am. Um, we appear to have a huge clump of seaweed around the prop. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to find there's a rope in it, the seaweed's grown on the rope, I don't know. But me and my sharp knife are going down to have a look. And uh, we're going to hang some ropes off the side and I'm going to keep a rope gripped in my hand. I'm not tying it around myself so that if, I get if the rope gets tangled I can just let go. We have the dinghy in the water with the engine already fitted and oars. So that is the safety boat. If I get swept off to sea, Gainer's got to come after me in the safety boat. I can't wear a PFD for this, a personal flotation device, because the idea is to get under the boat, not stay on the surface. So fortunately, I'm a good swimmer. Um, I'm a good underwater swimmer too, uh, but this is not what I had planned for my morning. So what we're doing now is we've got the dinghy and she's trying to see if she can pull the weed off with the boat hook. So, yeah, great arse there, Vic, Bevy. <laughs> I'm sitting very gingerly because the place is covered in sea lice or sea fleas or whatever these damn things are called that come off the ropes in the bottom of the boat. Yeah, uh, everything uh, we came, <laughs> everything just got infested again. Yesterday, when we cleaned the boat a little bit, we had sea lice everywhere. And with Beverly being in and out of the dinghy, I was covered in sea lice. Beverly was covered in sea lice and I had to douse her down because she, not only did the outer one have sea lice on, but there were actually sea lice on in between the second layer. We're, we're calling them sea lice. We do know what they are, but they're little creepy crawlies with lots of legs. Yeah. So, um, so how was it, Beverly? How successful were you, Bev? About, I don't know, 70% success. Um, Clearly the culprit is floating rope and we weren't near a pot boy or anything. Um, the area we were in was completely clear of pots and markers and things like that so it came as a complete surprise to us when the um, engine started juddering. We, we dropped the revs immediately, stuck the camera over the side and saw that we had something wrapped around the prop. Mm. But at least we were able to still keep going. Yes, admittedly um, uh, much reduced revs and um, even those revs that we could keep on uh, we're not doing the kind of speeds that we expect no, to be you, able to do that. Because you know all this crud around the prop destroying the props the props ability to push the boat. Mm. You know they're interfering with the aerodynamic flow of water well the hydrodynamic flow of water over the prop. So mm. yeah. yeah. But anyway I went down my biggest problem was actually getting under the boat which doesn't sound too hard you think you jump and you sunk like a stone you don't. I think 
I had layers of air trapped in the in because I was wearing a double wetsuit. Um, I must have air trapped. I was a boy. It was a cork. <laughs> I could not get down there for loving her money. So in the end, what I did was I, I used the boat hook to grab the prop and pull myself into it. So what we did was we. Uh, uh, hang, hang on a second. You're getting ahead of things. Yeah. This is what's left of the boat hook. The rest yep. of it's down there on the bottom somewhere. Because <laughs> at one point, when I got to the prop. I actually needed three hands, one for the boat hook, one for the knife, and one to grab the underneath the rope so that I could get it. And, um, well... <laughs> yeah, the boat hook is... And this is all you've got left. But well, I'm not mourning. I never liked that boat hook anyway. It was a horrible boat yeah. hook. So what we did in the end uh, was... Um, we, um, we have an old telescopic brush that we don't much like either. <laughs> but this time we tied the rope to it. Absolutely. Which we should have done with the boat hook. We should have done it with the boat hook. But the thing is, we tied a rope to it so that that Beverly used that to grab round the prop. Yeah, I hooked, I hooked the um, the head of the brush round the prop, pulled myself up to the prop, and then got basically that's one that, that's when this big handful came off. Um, you know, so uh, so we're fairly successful, but unfortunately not a hundred percent because the problem is, as Beverly's removed this. She's still got stuff there, and there's nothing now for her to... Yeah, there's nothing for her to, to hold myself down there, because I float like a cork. Um, now that I've cut this off, I've got nothing to keep me there. Mm. Um, and, and I can't get a finger in between the, the, the prop and thing. I need, I need another tool, and I need to be able to stay down there for longer than I can do. So we've um, ordered up a diver, and that's going to be 100 euros, but, I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? You either don't pay 100 euros and your boat stays here forever, where you pay 100 euros and go on your merry way, so, mm. yeah. So that's what we're going to do, isn't it, Bev? Yes, it is. Um, and uh, as soon as we're off this, I'm going to uh, douse the place down again yep. and get rid of the sea lice that are in the cockpit. Um, I don't know how people go swimming and doing other things in this because I was pretty damn chilled by the time I was done. Yeah, she... I mean, um, we, we took about, what, an hour, two hours over it? Mm. And by the end of that, I, I, was, I was cool. I was... But the thing is, you kept on war warming yourself up. In I had to, had to keep up, sit here, warm myself up, which is probably why there's all those sea fleas or whatever they that's are. That's probably why I've got it all over right there. Because that's where I sat. Yeah, of course it is. And um, But anyway, so I'm, I've, I've been down below. I've had a shower in the uh, shower room. And, um, you know, Gaynor will be going for her shower afterwards. Absolutely. And... Uh, that, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stay warm for a bit until the diver man turns up. Yeah, but at least now we can get rid of all this. My um, problem, we need to find an ATM. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go down below and look for an ATM while I'm getting the coffee on the go. So that after again, just dies this, which shouldn't take too long. And I had her shower, which shouldn't take too long. Yeah, we can have coffee. We can have coffee. So you are? Hey, old Donald. Hey, old Donald. And um, what's your business? Uh, West Cork Boat Services. And what have you just done for Salty Lass? We've just taken rope off your cup. Yeah. Oh, so I, if you, if you, um, I'll just go down here. I'll just, I'll just go and join them on the Super Duper Swim Platform and say, if you need that sort of thing done in around Glandor, this sort of part, this is the man to call. Absolutely. Thank you. No problem. Great job. <laughs>